the procedure we had with this with this uh, particular contract was that we we took over the the actual project management. Um, therefore, we were involved and tasked with formulating the conversion specification, obviously in conjunction with the owner and what he required as an end result, producing that tender document, sending that tender document out to selected shipyards. In this particular case, there were nine yards. And it came down to Camel Ed basically because we felt that their planning and their progress analysis was better and more clear than the other shipyard. And uh, I was contacted by uh, Mr Holt of uh, Maritime Audit and Technical Services to go along to Latre and, uh, and have a look at the Flex Service one. A specification was produced uh, and we, we bid amongst other bidders in Europe and uh, fortunately enough uh, we, we managed to secure the contract. But we do believe that we are um, we have a, a reasonable reputation in the uh, ship repair and conversion markets these days. Um, the, the name Camel Laird obviously um, is well known through, throughout the industry um, and we do have um, a self-motivated workforce um, which uh, prides themselves on, on, on doing the jobs. The way we approach this one, having discussed with the owner his requirements, we split it up into various task areas. Area A is the A-frame and the bow section and the working deck. Area B is the forward hold in which we put the winches, the power pack and the bow thruster. Area C is the new installation of a revised crane. Area D covers the new tensioners and the installations, both port and starboard. Area G was the new engine room, a totally new engine room um, in the midships. Area E was the installation of the new azimuthing thruster. And area P was the modifications to the main navigation bridge. Now, this particular ship, being 35 years of age, she's, she's well worn and she's been continually operating. Um, therefore, a lot of maintenance, basically on steel structures and things, wanted to be done. So we had to take the old lady and really rebuild her in more modern fashion, give her more power, provide her with more high-tech equipment as far as the flexible product laying was concerned, provided with the means to lay two or three flow lines plus control and binnacles because obviously it's a very old ship and needed a lot of work. She was built at uh, Austin and Pickersgill 35 years ago, 1960 I guess, and was built as an ore carrier, converted in 1967 to the first purpose-built flexible pipe layer. Latterly was reconverted in 19... 80, again really an update more than anything else and has worked in Brazil since 1970. So she has seen long contracting and continuous contracting. And so we had a three-tier situation. We had the dry docking work that the shipyard needed to do. We had the conversion specific work that the shipyard needs to do. On top of that, a third tier of, well, we had better do this because she needs it. But in, in doing the work that's being done today, I would say that she ha probably has a further useful life of 10 years from now, not just five. We have a general in-house expertise. Most of the players that, um, that we have here have uh, been in the industry for 15, 20, and some 25 years. And they've grown up with dynamically positioned ships. So we have a, a very good general knowledge base of what an offshore operator is looking for. And we will formulate a project team that we will put together for the owner and keep that team together from start to finish.
Ken Lovell from SSDS brings in the years of shipbuilding experience with British shipbuilders. He is a, an extremely competent naval architect and brings in the naval architectural expertise. But it looks as if it'll be okay. We might have a bit of shuffling to do instead of straight across for an angle. So I've said to Linton, as soon as he can, get the weights around the morning. Let's get them on and let's see what that's going to happen. Orca Olsen from Alltech would bring in the electrical power knowledge. Oh, Hervé uh, is a company uh, man uh, and he is an expert in his field on flexible pipe laying, flexible pipe handling, flexible pipe makeup. It is a very specialized uh, operation because it was a very old vessel and the difficulty is to interface the old remaining part of equipment, uh, of structure and uh, with, uh, with a new uh, with new equipment and that is always a difficult. It's, it's easier to start. It's, uh, it's easier to start from a white piece of paper. <laughs> and then we also have from the owner a project manager or a site manager, in this particular case site manager Ray Garriak. Stena Offshore Limited. We have a vessel in the uh, shipyard of Camel Lairds in Birkenhead. Uh, I desperately need a service engineer to come here tomorrow someone at the end of the project yes, who will take the ship from us and continue to operate it. So he will see the conversion develop, he will see the modifications change, he will see the problems we have with equipment and hopefully the, uh, the cures and then he will go with the vessel when we leave. We would look at the equipment that has got to go on board, where it has got to go and why and then we would sit with Ken and say right now we need the steelwork to support all this. And can you do it? The contribution really from um, Sun and the Ship Design, Ken Lovell and his, uh, and, and his lads, is the actual grassroots of the structural design. Specific equipment that went on board included some 10 or 11 very large winches all semi-automatically controlled were put on board in some areas in extremely confined spaces. A new bow crane, um, a new bow thruster to assist with the dynamic positioning system, a new retractable azimuthing thruster in the aft chip again to assist with dynamic positioning and maneuverability and various new equipment on deck for controlling the launching and recovery of flexible pipes. The aft thruster, it's used extensively on dynamically positioned ships. What it did for this ship was to give it more lateral power for sustaining station keeping and a lot more uh, stern flexibility for operation. The bow section on the old ship was very similar. In this particular case, the deck space, the working deck space, had to be increased, so a decision was taken, really, to do away with the old belt and refashion a new one about three to four metres forward. This massive section that looks a little bit like a hammerhead shark. Camel Eds, in turn, had to then fabricate it, either in one or two blocks. They chose to produce it in one block and fabricated this in the covered hallway. The difficulty with a large block like that for any shipyard is that the block, until it gets on the ship, is not really self-supporting and therefore the handling from the shop to the ship is the most difficult thing, which was handled quite well also. <laughs>